I am a sim racer. Not like by trade. Well, I, I guess I guess kind of by trade. It's more of a hobby, I suppose. But uh, it's something I love. And if you're watching this, I bet you're a sim racer too. You probably had that thought before of you know, man, I might be able to make this a real thing. You know, what if what if real life racing is just like sim racing? You never know unless you get the opportunity. And bless the heart and soul of Prodigy Racing and Williams Gaming Club, they have teamed up to make it possible for four lucky people from iRacing. If you have to compete in a 10 week time attack series, which we currently are, you're looking at the week three video at the moment. If you wanna catch up on that, one will be here and then the other will be here now. So those two videos. If you ever have 80 minutes of free time and wanna watch that, feel free to. We ended last week in P9. This week's track is Sakuba. The car we're driving is the MX-5 Cup car. It is a classic combination, one that I drove a ton when I first got on iRacing. Haven't driven it much since then, but I remember loving it back in the day. So I'm gonna do everything in my power that I can to stay competitive there. Am I gonna be the fastest guy out there? Hell no, but do I have more time than most people? Probably, so I can do a ton of laps and try and get there. That's the goal. Though it may be true I've never actually driven a real race car, I'm gonna go out on a limb and uh, say that the biggest difference is the physical aspect of it. So this video is going to have a special emphasis on my personal fitness journey and how I've been kind of preparing on the off chance that I do actually manage to make my way to a real life seat. Let's take a look first at what this competition actually looks like. Williams Gaming Club and Prodigy Racing teamed up. Two ways to get into the finals. Top 36 of the iRacing Normal MX-5 Cup Series or top 12 in the PRL Time Attack Series. They follow the same track schedule and at the end of the 10 weeks, all 48 drivers are split up into two finals races where the winner gets a Prodigy Pass. <laughs> Week number three is here. Our first time driving this track since I probably, like my first couple of months on iRacing. Sakuba full 2000, it's about a minute, two second lap. Right now the fastest lap is a 102.19. I think it'll probably move down to the 101s at some point. I just got back from the gym, I'm feeling good. I'm refreshed. I want to get this done in as few laps as possible. The first week we had 500 laps. The second week we had 300. If we could continue that trend and lower it to what? So it's minus 200 laps the first week. If we could minus 200 laps again and just put in 100 laps, I would be absolutely stoked with that. Feeling a lot more motivated for this week as well. I think last week was a big, big lesson learned in terms of uh, keeping myself motivated, holding myself accountable. I re really struggled last week, so I'm looking forward to making a change this week. And that starts on day one, which is today. We haven't put in our time yet. This is the current leaderboard. 102.13 actually is the fastest. To get into the top 10, we just need a 102.6, it looks like. We're in the sim, and before I actually hop into a session, I wanted to do something. I used to do this a lot in Porsche Cup, where I would watch the highest strength of field race, watch the fastest laps, and really study them. Now, granted, in the race session, the weather is a bit different, so the track is much grippier but I think there's still a lot to learn here. So we're going to watch this race and kind of see where everybody stands right now and hopefully pull some things from this race before we actually hop in and try and do our own time trial times. Now, my goal was to actually learn like some of the racing line from watching this race, but I, I, I really just watched it for entertainment and I'll kind of go through it. Williams car in P3 tucking to the inside, car number four looking to go around the outside of him into turn one, not gonna happen. The Williams car goes side by side with student driver. OMP sneaks up the inside of, I don't know what that is, that red and blue car. They go two by two behind the leader through turn one, heading into, I think it's turn four. The uh, It's kind of like a carousel here. And the car, they're still two by two behind the leader. Around the outside goes student driver and the OMP slash bell car and they make it work. Already, I was having a ton of fun watching this. Like, look at that. I, I mean, you don't see that in Porsche Cup very often, the two by two. That's like, you'll see it at Spa occasionally or some other places, but they are making it all work cleanly. Now that would not last forever. Eventually they would settle into a single file line, which I'm sure is gonna help to keep everybody alive, uh, you would think. Lap number two comes around this pink car chasing down the red and black one. And this is the first kind of hint 
of what was to come during this race. I went from seeing it as a very clean, looking like a, a lot of fun battling race to just murder after murder. So this guy running into the back of him, um, not at not not even at one point breaking, just pushing him around. So gaining a position that way. Lap number three comes around, and the two guys still battling for P4 back here. That 99 in the OMP slash Bell. Bell opens up this corner, looks to throw the car number four offline. He parks it on the apex, though. That is some pretty good defense. Still manages to find a way alongside the OMP car. Does really good move to him. Same thing here. He's going to try and force this guy to the inside, throw him offline, potentially look for a switch back if this guy goes deep. However, he defends it really well and this guy just drives straight through him. Like, like he set the move up and regardless of if it worked for him or not, he was just gonna force the issue. He did it, I guess he got the position. This was like pretty shocking to watch. And, and I don't know exactly what the I rating is of this guy, but this was like one of the higher split races that I had seen. And maybe not every race was like this, but this was like my first time watching a race on this track. So it kind of set the tone for what I thought it was going to be like. This is the penultimate lap, lap number 13. The uh, orange car still in P4. It's car number eight. I'll start calling him that. I'm, yeah, I, I don't know. He just drives into the back of this guy, gains a position that way. So up into P3, he is forcing his way through. And um, the Williams car drops two positions from that. So down into, I think he's down to P5 now. And he was not happy about that, as you could imagine. However, this race was not all just murders. There was a fantastic battle for the lead. This is the final lap. The uh, car we are on board with P2 here, chasing down student driver. And honestly, he kind of missed his opportunity to set up for a move. You typically need to do something into turn one, and it takes sometimes an entire lap to get that move done on this track. Um, once you throw somebody offline, it basically affects them all of the way until this next corner here. So it, it looks like there's not really much opportunity for him to get the lead back, but then P1 goes massively deep there. That's going to send him deep through this exit and create a massive speed difference. Looks like there is going to be some side-by-side -side action into the penultimate corner. Side-by-side, -side, just about not quite actually backing out and looking for the switch back really really well executed as well kind of tricked my eyes right there manages to get himself alongside about halfway down the straight and by the end of the straight he's actually a little bit of a nose ahead and then look at this move around the final corner student driver holding him as tight as he possibly can a little bit of door banging i think that just happens in this series and uh p2 manages to hold it on track crosses in p2 so not quite getting the move done fantastic driving to both of them and an exciting final lap for those guys reverse back to that final lap and this is the battle for I don't know, I think it's like P6 or P5. Car number four just sending it up the inside, pit maneuvering the initial D car, and then giving a bit of a love touch to car number seven who slides back into him. They go off of the track. I just put that on everybody involved. That was horrible racing. The, the initial D was honestly the only one who shouldn't have been collected in that. Coming into the carousel, and he's gonna look to go around the outside of car number seven, whose car can't turn left, so he pushes car number 11 off of track, but uh, he still manages to get that position back, so good for him at least because I mean he, he really didn't deserve any of that I watched that top split race just now thinking I was gonna learn a lot but holy shit I hope the finale race is not like that because that was awful to watch everybody was killing each other it's like they would set themselves up for a move and if they didn't get the move they would just murder the other person anyway and be like well I had the move and then you blocked or you it wasn't even blocking like they would defend and uh, the person just wouldn't care and killed them. But I'm definitely going to do some races this week and try and get some experience myself. But man, that was kind of hard to watch. As unhelpful as that race was, I... I'm going to follow through with my plan of hopping into a time trial. And uh, my lap, not going to be great here. It's been a very long time since I've really driven this track. So uh, I'm going to walk you through what I remember of like the lap guide. And I did kind of end up using this throughout the duration of this week. So breaking just after your car gets kind of onto that fence here for turn one, and you're kind of turning in early here, you still want to slightly late apex this one as it is a fairly long straight, uh, pretty important that you have a good run out of turn one and um, don't compromise your exit too much. Cutting this curb on the right side, breaking just at the end of it or just before, and you kind of want to aim straight into the middle of this carousel and the camber will help get you turned. Get on the throttle a little bit later than you would think because I actually don't want to push my car all of the way to the right side. You can see I'm leaving space over there because I want to open up this next corner early. It's just a lift and turn in here. I kind of lift at the end of these yellow or these orange like barriers brown barriers cut the inside curb don't go too far off to the left here you want to stay on the tarmac and you hold this corner about as tight as you can breaking just at the end of this green kind of curb 
curving that runs off here or just before the end of that. And this corner is kind of interesting. It's a corner where you can actually utilize trail braking pretty well in the Miata and that'll continue throughout the entirety of the week. Throttle early. It's a huge straight. By the end of the straight, uh, there's a pretty specific place to turn and brake. There is that first blue box on the left side. I turn in just before it and then I start very lightly braking when my car is kind of level with that. So turning in right before it, braking as the car lines up with it, really about keeping a high minimum speed all of the way through here, throttling just about as early as you can and crossing the line for a 102.5 for actually a pretty good time. I just finished my first session. It was only like five or six laps something. I went super quick and I think it's safe to say that watching the race and really kind of taking note of how to go fast before trying to set a lap helps a lot. Ended up setting a 102.54. I think that was on like lap four or lap five. You can also see that the top time has already lowered to a 101.996. I assume that that's going to get a lot lower, a lot faster, but uh, it is what it is for today. I'm happy with where I'm at. We still have a whole week to go. I've got some catching up to do. It's day number two already. I have been working on last week's video all day. I did have some time to do some time traveling. We're gonna cover that in one second. But there's a couple of things I wanna say first. One of those things is that I had previously covered the fact that I believed if I stayed in the top 12 for all 10 weeks, I would finish in the top 12. Looking over the, the scoring right now, I don't think that's true. There are a few guys who have only just popped up last week and these guys placed pretty high in the top 10 so if they continue to do that there could be this funnel of you know some guys aren't racing every single week and they could replace some of those people at the top me possibly as i kind of find myself on the border and push us out of the top 12 by the end of the 10 weeks which means i need to really focus on being higher than just p12 every week i need to really shoot for p6 p7 around there mid pack and that should keep me safe um but yeah that's just something i've noticed that's kind of scared me now i also want to cover how my time trials went so far it's been freaking awesome i think the mx5 is starting to click with me again i'm starting to do more races more open practices i'm starting to watch the other top split races and really pay attention to the top guys what they're doing in their line how early they're getting on throttle a lot of watching the steering because i think that is a huge thing in this car the line is very important but how you achieve that line is just as important from what i'm seeing it's better to counter steer under braking and then get a little bit of a whip as you very quickly trail off of the brakes and just as you start to get back on throttle you kind of try to return it to center as much as you can you are of course going to have to keep some angle in this car a lot more than what i'm used to in the porsche cup and i'm also starting to do more races as well me and joey just finished a race it didn't go how i wanted it to i actually ended up murdering somebody but the races are uh definitely helping so yeah, doing the races absolutely gives you a massive amount of practice and pace. You you just you follow other people's lines, you experiment a bit more, and uh, you find things out. I was so so much more confident that now I'm actually trying to open up this first corner to really try and maximize my lap because I think I have the pace around the rest of the lap to actually make use of maximizing my entry uh, to the lap. So lap number eight of this session, pretty early on, I hadn't really done many laps in the time trials this week, and uh, things were hooking up pretty easily. For me not the best first corner but solid enough to uh make this lap worth driving my optimum was about a tenth or i think it was about two tenths faster than my best at this point so there was still a lot of time to improve still holding the track tighter it's not the uh it, it's not the necessary line you can take that differently but that's just the way that i found it to be fastest for myself riding the shortest straightest line once again through here breaking at the green curb keeping it a bit more open on entry to uh, cut back for a better exit didn't feel great through corner number eight, if I'm honest. I think I trailed off way too slowly and just kind of overslowed the car. It felt really, really easy to get on power, which means I probably wasn't sending it hard enough. Now, watch my brake and throttle through here. You'll notice that I blip the throttle still, and then I get back on it. This is an old habit, and old habits die hard. You will see that one die hard in this video. But it's an improvement, baby. We find ourselves now in P5 with a 102.1, which is a really good time, and it's the least amount of laps we have done so far in all three of our weeks. I think P12 will probably end up being like a mid 102.2 by the end of the week, 
So I do want to lower my time some. I want to shoot for a 102 flat. I think that's totally feasible. I'm going to put some more time into it, but this is the end of day three for me. I'm going to hop back onto some editing. Me and my girlfriend are going to go get a little drink and it's going to be fun. So I will see you guys in the morning. Cheers. <laughs> it's Thursday and I wanted to cover something briefly. This, this doesn't really have to do at all with sim racing. Uh, it's more on the fitness side, which is something that, like you know, I've been really been trying to dedicate myself to. And I found struggles, especially this past week. And I think a big part of that was because I found myself struggling more than I thought with the time trial. And I kind of bled into my fitness. I found myself not working as hard in the gym, not finishing my runs, sometimes not even starting them. Today was my first time doing a run in, or doing a 5K in I think three days. Like as I was, beginning my run I got about a mile in and I was thinking you know maybe I just end this one early my legs were hurting before I even got onto the treadmill my ankles were hurting I found myself starting to get out of breath earlier than I normally do it felt very easy to give up mentally like really early on and that kind of scared me I ended up pushing through and weirdly enough once I got through like the first mile of the 5k my leg stopped hurting and I ran the rest of the 5k so I, I ran another 2.2 miles without like raising my heart rate and it felt like it was I, I feel like I could have run for like two hours today and been absolutely fine if I look at myself you know three years ago where I was physically and where I was in terms of like driving skills um I'm way way ahead of where I was now it has taken a long time and I almost don't notice because it's been so long it just shows that putting in the work does actually pay off and you know and in anything you do, it will pay off and it will help. Anyway, let's check where we are on the standings. We are currently there in P7, 102.168. Uh, the guy at the top is not that far ahead of us. We're actually only, we're less than two tenths behind him. I expect we'll probably be shuffled down to P12 if we don't put in a better time by the end of the week. But before I work on any more time trialing, I'm going to put in some more races because right now I'm not really competitive in the races. I, I find myself either getting shuffled back slowly or kind of just stuck and unable to make a pass. So I really need to work on my racecraft and just the, the strategy of the Miata races because it is way different than the Porsche Cup. Once I started to obsess over fitness, I really, really got into it. I wanna cover a couple of things briefly about when I started fitness, which was about three years ago now. I was scouring the internet for good influencers, good information, uh, and good workouts because I really had no idea what I was doing. And just to give you an idea of where I was at that time, here is me in 2021. Yeah. I went through a lot of workouts, but the one that I found to help myself out the most involved a lot of calisthenics, which is like body weight exercises, really focusing on mastering your own body and your own weight. And I eventually found a set of exercises and a pattern of them that for me personally, I found to to not be so much that it would like make me stop doing it, like it wouldn't discourage me. But at the same time, every time I completed a workout, it felt like I had really pushed myself. Now, to this day, I still do this work at home. One second, there's a dump truck going through. I call it the 2028 workout, and the thought process behind that was in 2021, I'd give myself until 2028, which is seven years, and I don't think I expected results to come as fast as they would. 20 push-ups, 20 body weight squats, eight pull-ups, and then a 28 minute run, which when ran at 6.9 miles per hour, puts you at a 5K. There are of course different variations for each of these. Uh, if a push-up is too easy for you, you can prop your feet up on like a bench and do technically like an incline push-up, which is using more of your body weight um, as weight, so it makes it heavier. But you really just wanna make sure you're engaging your chest more than your arms when doing a push-up. Uh, I had really big knee problems and ankle problems from playing soccer, football, my whole life. They call it footballer's ankle, where like the anterior tilt, so pulling up on my ankle really hurt, as well as both of my knees just from wear and tear. With sim racing, you kind of need both of those joints to be pretty healthy. Body weight squats saved my life. I would do 80 to 100 of these like every morning. It's very little stress on your body, but it's basically like acts like a stretch. 
and it helped me with flexibility. I found my knee pain basically dissolving along with my ankle pain. I was able to go do things I hadn't done in a long time, like run and uh, shoot the basketball, some stuff that really requires a lot of that, that kind of angle from those joints. Astonishingly, this park does not have a pull-up bar. This is the closest thing I could find, so I'm gonna try and do uh, pull-ups just kind of without my legs touching the ground. The idea behind me doing pull-ups though for this workout was basically that pull-ups are kind of like a full upper body exercise. And when you keep your core tight, it's like a core exercise as well. If you can't do pull-ups, I would recommend starting with negatives and not weighted pull-ups. Negatives is kind of like when you jump up to the bar and then slowly, as slow as you can, lower yourself down and then jump back up so you're not doing the pull-up part, just the let down part. Do four sets of all of those. So it's 80 uh, push-ups, 80 squats, uh, 36 pull-ups. Then a 28 minute run should equal a 5K. And I will see you guys later. Yeah, I'm gonna put my camera in the car before I do a whole run and just leave it exposed in the middle of a park. To put into perspective, this picture that I showed you earlier, the very day that I took that picture, I tried to do my first workout. I could not do five clean push-ups and I've never been able to not do five clean push-ups. Squats were absolutely horrible. Everything hurt, my entire body hurt. I didn't do my first actual pull-up until eight months into doing this routine. I just did negatives every single day. When I did my first run, my first 5K, I tried to basically compete with my high school 5K time. I ended up quitting before I did one mile and then I didn't run again for a month. I realized that when I made stuff easier for myself, I jogged slower, I tried to push less on every single exercise I was I would do, it ended up providing me so much more longevity. I wanted to do the workout again tomorrow and get better at it, as opposed to feeling so defeated that I never wanted to do it again. That being said, we have been moved down to P9. So people are starting to get faster, but before I get the chance to go try and battle my time back up, I have a lot of work today on the editing side of things. So hopefully I can put in some times tonight it's day number five and yes, it's like 5 p.m. It's super late. I've actually been practicing in some open practice already. I'm about to hop in and do some races today before I hop back into the time trials, which I desperately need to do today because last time we checked, I think I was like P6 or somewhere around there. We have been moved all of the way down to P11. The times are extremely close though. I mean, we're at a 168. If we were to move up one tenth to a 068, we're in P P5. I'm sorry for the crickets. They're like loud as hell. I've been trying to stop them all night. They just keep coming back. I don't know. It's 2 a.m. It's my 2 a.m. checkup, as I seem to do every single day. And we put in a few, I mean, we put in a lot of laps. I think we put in like 70 or 80 laps, maybe more than that. Although, to be fair to myself, a lot of them were just blind laps. I was like talking to people and I was just driving, going through the motions, which is not a good habit and I need to stop doing that. But uh, the first like 30 or so were super focused laps and we did better our time. We also did three races today, but only one of them I was really competing for a win. I'm getting much more consistent and consistently quick with doing races as opposed to just doing like a shit ton of hot laps. So we're in P10, ending the day there. I'm gonna call it quits. 102.140, pretty close to the guy behind to falling backwards. Uh, but also only a couple of hundredths from moving up like like five positions it's crazy dude it should not be this hard to get my day started i woke up like really really early today like i went to bed last night like 4 a.m because i'm stupid and then i woke up today at like seven to help my girlfriend get ready for the farmer's market and then i slept until like two i had amazing dreams i legitimately had dreams about driving the porsche cup i missed that car so much frick man i don't even i don't even want to say what time it is but i'm just getting my day started we're gonna start with the 5k honestly i might even run more because i just want to tire myself out so i fall asleep tonight early and uh, as soon as we get back i am hopping straight to the time trials because we got moved down again we're now in p11 so the work uh, continues to need to be put in and look how close it is look how close it is Nothing like a big thing of caffeine at 5 p.m. It's 5 p.m. <laughs> okay, so 
as they do. <laughs> In case you can't tell, there's a party going on next to your next door. It's very loud. Plans have changed slightly. I'm gonna go sell this wheel to a guy who's also driving the time attack trial, William, really fast. And he's in LA. What do you know? Um, so the run won't commence until after that, and then after that, we will do some time trialing today. So it's gonna be a little bit later, but it's gonna happen because it needs to. It's 7.46 p.m. It's almost 8 p.m. It's time to drive, finally, try and improve our times. If we can do a single tenth, we move up like, like six or seven positions. Let's get it. So I just finished a fairly long session. Uh, I had William in there with me. Joey's been in the call. We, we went through, we broke down some Garage 61, did a bit of analyzing and kind of looking at each other's best sectors and not just our own optimums, which I think helped a lot. Look at this, baby. Look at this. We're P7, P7 with a 102.103. If you look at the times here, it's kind of wild that there is almost a tenth between P3 and P4, but then from P4 to P9, like there's like a tenth there. So there's a tenth between like five or six people, and then there's a tenth between two. I'm specifically, I'm talking about this guy. 102.07 to 102.00, so seven, seven hundredths between them. Um, I just need to slip up there, so I need to go three hundredths faster. I think that's gonna be my goal for tomorrow is to fit into that gap. So I need to go faster than a 102.07. I need three hundredths. I think I can do that. I think I can do that. Final day of the time trials. I got shuffled down to P9 last night. Joey is on right now, he's in P21. So I'm gonna try and help him out with some Garage 61, just kind of watch his laps, as well as try and better mine because I know that I can. We did a lot of investigating last night, myself, Joey, and William, who's been driving with us as well. Uh, found quite a few places where I can improve. The final sector specifically, there's at least half of a tenth in that final sector for me, which is nuts to think about. We have seven hours to go until it ends. I'm not driving for seven hours today. I'm not doing it, I don't care. I've done 144 laps so far. I don't wanna do another 500. I don't wanna do another 300. I wanna do maybe another 100 max, please. Just like 100 max. I cut my run slightly short because I knew I was gonna have a lot of driving to do. So I only ran a mile, but I did a full body workout otherwise. Small update on the times, just so everybody is aware. Currently at a 102.103. Joey's at a 102.309. And looking at the top 12 at the moment, Jackson is P12 with a 102.120. So Joey needs to gain about two, two tenths. You see how this time is a 0 0.07? There's seven hundredths between this guy and this guy. And that's P5 and four. My goal is to slip in there today and take P5. It's already 2 p.m. Enough delay, it's time to hop in this sim. Sukuba as a whole has been a lot better to me. For the first time on the final day, I'm confident in my ability to improve. Like, I actually genuinely believe it's gonna be easier than the past couple of weeks. Maybe not easier, but I am more prepared for it and I think I'm more capable. More capable, I think is a pretty good word to sum up how I was feeling. Was still pretty inconsistent in sectors, that, well this corner right here, it was very, very easy to mess up corner one and then basically your whole lap is toasted and it becomes practice. But I hit it pretty well on this occasion and once you hook that one up, you have to hook up the rest of the lap. This corner was puzzling for me, but I began to figure it out, holding it a lot tighter all of the way through from entry to exit, uh, still not pushing out all of the way wide there. And then the uh, second carousel slash hairpin, I don't know, major trailing moment. Look at the look at the brake trace there. I almost feel like it's more difficult to trail brake in this car compared to the Porsche Cup just because of how, uh, just because of the suspension in this car, it's, it's a lot looser. Look at this braking. No no fiddling on the uh, brake or the throttle. It's throttle off onto brake and then straight back onto throttle and ba-boom. Fixed a bit of a problem there that we had through that final sector uh, with dancing on the pedals. Super quick check-in. I'm gonna go eat. My girlfriend just made some more chicken. Okay, holy crap, holy crap. Uh, I set a 102.086. 
which is P7. It's pretty good, but I can I, I know I can do better. I am constantly setting new optimums in sector four, and I think that makes up a huge part of the lap. Uh, it really just bites me in the ass when I mess up sector one and then sector three. Those are the two I'm kind of bouncing between right now. Sector two is pretty consistent. Uh, sector four is constantly getting better and better. It's just I have to hook together sectors one and three. It's literally only two corners that are holding me back. <sighs> and the margins are so small. We've only got five hours left. There we are in P8, 102.086. Look at that, there's somebody behind us by 1,000. Time was running out. It was the final day. We were breaching into like the two hour mark left in, uh, in, in the rest of the time trial this week. And I was trying so desperately to improve. I only needed about a 10th to go way up the order. And I felt like this was my opportunity to have a really good result. I just felt connected to this track but I was kind of mindlessly making mistakes. Like I lifted way too early there and the rear end starts coming around that I still get on throttle, spin the card, lap number 17, an error very few and far between, but it feels so terrible to make where you drive too deep onto this curbing and then you end up just not having a great angle, actually oversteering here through uh, the sweeping section, which is gonna toast that lap as well. Lap number 28 comes around. Keep in mind, I'm having to do two out laps before I can do a flying lap every single time. Um, on this case, you know, we do two flying lap, two, two out laps, flying lap, mess up that corner. I just park the car and reset it. Eventually, we come to lap 34 of this session, which is the longest session, I think, or second longest session I've done this week. I was doing a lot of open practice instead, uh, but first corner hooked up very well for me. I was feeling pretty good about that. First corner, I mean, once you do that one, the lap is on. This is a flying lap. We're looking good. Down to first early staying super tight on the inside not using all of that uh not using all of the track on the right side there so leaving some room to open up this corner a lot easier trying to avoid as much of that curve on the left side as i can so that i can turn in earlier take a slightly shorter and a straighter line up to this corner breaking staying a little bit wider and trying to turn in later to really really get a good exit that one felt pretty good. Uh, I didn't have to fight the wheel at all, which is actually typically a sign that you didn't send it hard enough through that corner. Sometimes counter steering there is a, just a little bit of counter steer means that you're really shipping it and probably gaining time through their final corner. Decisive off of the throttle, decisive onto the throttle, no fiddling around and it is an improvement. We did another 30 laps after that with no improvement, a very small improvement, but it matters because the margins are so small. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Moved us up into P6, and look who's ahead of us. It's that guy. That guy. It's that guy. P6 is not a bad place to be. I was pretty content with that, but, I mean, here you see me in another time trial, and my mind just wasn't totally in it at this point. I think I was, like, almost too content with p6 and i'm driving in the dirt i don't know what what i'm, what I'm doing here but um I really shouldn't be content with that because like I said earlier, there are some guys who just showed up who are putting in heaters of times. And uh, you can see 103 on my first flying lap, 102.5 on my second. Didn't even get a flyer here. I guess I messed it up. 102.2, we're getting down there. 102.08, we're close. Lap 20 comes around. It's time to hook something up. A little bit of counter steering under braking for turn one and dropping the brake extremely quick to help with a lot of rotation. Um, on the exit of turn one into the carousel turn number three four whatever this is trailing all the way through there trying to lift less and just kind of trail longer leaving all of that space on the right side as i found that to be my best way through that corner there's definitely multiple ways to get through there uh some of the other guys i was watching did not leave any space over there but i liked to super big trailing through that corner and getting onto throttle right when the brake gets to zero percent turning in at that little blue guy right there trying to minimize counter steering and keep keep a straight line like basically just keep grip all of the way through there i think it's really important once you start sliding you mess up your exit and it's another slight slight improvement they matter but there was just something going on in my head right now i didn't even i didn't celebrate that improvement i didn't care about it i exited that time trial i hopped into a new one fresh car fresh track fresh mind and uh this is my first outlap of that trial at this point we're coming to like the 30 minutes left in the time trial uh, era. So every single lap counts. You have to make every single lap count. 
this is my first outlap. I'm taking it super slow, a little bit too slow right there. I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but uh, <laughs> you probably hear the music coming in. I'm not gonna try and try and bait you guys into thinking I wasn't about to have the best lap of my life. Approaching the final corner, opening it up so that we can have a massive run onto the line and I'll just let you watch it. Heading to the line for just the final time. 101, baby. We broke into the 101s. Oh, everything just hooked up. And on the second lap, like, what? what? Let's fucking go. Let's go. Go. Let's go. I don't know. There's 20 minutes left, 20 minutes. Can it stand? I don't know. Do I need to put in another lap? Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna keep driving. 20 minutes, what does it hurt? What does it hurt? There is 12 minutes left. We're currently sitting in P2. William and Joey are both driving right now. William is currently sitting in P6. It says P5 right there, but that's because it hasn't updated and we are now in P2. Um, as you can see right here, we'll just, we'll look at it one more time. We are currently in P2, so that hasn't updated yet. Joey currently in, there he is, P19 with a 102.243. To get into the top 12, he needs a 102.120. He has seven minutes and he's currently deafened. This is Joey, he's a little puffer fish. He's currently deafened, so he's locked the fuck in. I'll keep you boys updated. Uh, Six minutes left now. Oh, Joey, this would be so good for Joey if you could get this. I think Joey has time for one more flying lap. So he's about to head on to it. It has to, this has to work for him. Oh, this has to work for him. I think he can mess this one up because it's technically still his out lap. Fuck no, actually, I don't think he can. Okay. That was really good for a for an outlap. He got on throttle early. It's officially 10. It's actually 10.01 right now. We're gonna see what happens. I think Joey's just gonna keep driving to see if maybe he can get it anyway. It might not count, but we're gonna see what happens. Take a separate moment real quick. Actually, you know what? I haven't been able to um, properly celebrate my lap yet, but that's okay. We're going to give it a minute. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, that's really good. We're about to celebrate with a game night with Joey as well. Woo! Let's take a look at the standings at the end of this week. We moved up one position. We're uh, in P8 with a 280. And looking ahead, we're actually like really close all the way up to P3. We're only six points behind P3. And then looking backwards, we have quite a lot of room, like seven points to P9 and then even more to P10. Joey finishing in P29 this week. So still have some work to do, Joey. We're, we're gonna be watching you. Lime Rock Park is next week, possibly the only more classic combination. And I'm fucking ready. I am a 
sim racer. And if you're watching this, God, that's blinding. Mom, Dad, it's more than just a game. 